just like the prime and I wandered along Worries and fears I claim for my own Feel like the prime and God gave back this sight Praise the Lord, I saw the light I saw the light I believe that the lame go walk and the blind are going to see. I believe that the gates of hell will trip when the church begins to sing. I believe, I believe, I believe. As I bow before you, Lord, I will rise in confidence. I will see your goodness, Lord. such a beautiful day today especially to be in the house of the Lord with all y'all I just want to say to you to someone in here I don't know who it is I don't know what you're going through and I've probably never been where you are but I do know that Jesus can carry you he can lead you he can walk for you when you can't walk he can talk for you when you can't talk. And he loves you. I know this because I'm living proof of it. This next little song we're going to do is a, it's my story. And it's funny how he continues to work through me. In spite of me. Even with this little song. So I hope y'all sing along with us. Let's knock the devil in the head with it. Sing as loud as we can. The words will be up there on the screen. Let's sing this together. How many times will you pick me up off the ground? Where I'm always found from the things that let me down, I can't hide from the things that keep me bound. But I can't walk without you holding my hand, and I can't talk without knowing where I stand, and I can't be. The man I need to be if it's me And only me, oh you see I try to do it my way, but I lie When I said it was okay, cause I can't hide This feeling deep inside, but I try Lord knows I try, but I can't walk without you holding my hand, and I can't talk without knowing where to shout with a shout of acclamation and take me home. Joy shall fill 
about something that every person alive can identify with, whether you're this young or you're that old. Every person can identify with this thing. Maybe you never heard about it. We don't have much of it in society, do we? It's called anxiety. In fact, we're not just going to talk about anxiety on a, on a, on a basic level, but we're going to talk about it on an extreme level. Okay, this message can, can reach and help those who deal with it on a basic level, but it's certainly, um, it's certainly geared to help those who know they've got to do something with the anxiety because it's, it's just uh, having its way in their life. I want to give you a working definition of extreme anxiety. If you've got your worship guide there, please follow along with your notes. Extreme anxiety is defined as this, extreme feelings of fear are anxiety. Extreme feelings of fear or anxiety that are persistent, excessive, and difficult to ignore. It's not just an extreme uh, feeling, but it is a persistent, excessive, difficult to ignore feeling. This is more than just an occasional thought or situation. Now, listen, most anxieties, let's just be real about it, they are uh, uh, connected to experiences. Could be one experience, could be numerous experiences. Could have been a process of wearing you down at this point. Uh, could have been an event that just changed everything that you were feeling. And, and, and anybody who's lived a while, you know what it's like to feel like the bottom fell out of your, um, your boat. And, and you're like, God, I, I need you to help me. But we're not talking about just momentary stress or, or an anxious thought. We're talking about extreme anxiety that as it persists and as it grows and as it hangs around, it not only um, gets a hold on your life for a moment, it becomes a stronghold on your life, okay? I always say this with anything, pain or, or emotions or anything else, either you feel on top of it or it feels on top of you. And it begins to dominate your thoughts, meaning this. It's weighing on your heart when you lay your head down at night, but when you wake up, that rascal's still coming back at you. You know, you feel like you're playing at Chuck E. Cheese, which can be dangerous these days. Kids, watch out. Um, the worst game is that one where you got to hit them things that jump up. Absolutely. And, uh, and I'll just go ahead and let you know, Jeremiah, I terrorize them things. Okay, I just start banging. I act just like I'm a five-year-old child over there. And my wife's well, like, listen, you know there's an age limit on this game. In fact, I start borrowing the other one beside it. I'm like, listen, you can come on up here, you little squirrel. And, and you know, them pop-up games. And listen, that's what this stress does. When it gets to this point that I'm talking about of extreme, it, 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 you, you start to hit the panic button. They call these things that panic attacks. You have feelings of your heart racing, and, 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 and you, 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 if you had a Fitbit like I, I used to have till mine died um, that would also tell me my heart rate, I'm like, well, surely the pastor's having a heart attack because something's running along in here like Forrest Gump. And, and, and I check it. My heart rate's fine, but yet nothing feels fine to me. I'm like, well, listen, I thought we need to go to ER right now. 
It not only, I want you to hear this extreme anxiety, not only has the, the potential to disrupt your life, and it does, it, it, it can take your life. This is where I want you to hear me very clearly. One night, two weeks ago, one of my former high school classmates uh, thought that she was just having another anxiety attack or, or panic attack, and, and she had uh, several before, which I believe most of us can identify with. If, if you can't, God bless you. I'm glad you're stronger than me. But that night, two weeks ago, her anxiety uh, it, it evidently became extreme, okay? And, and, and she had talked with some before about, you know, anxious moments or so and, 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 and worried about this or that. But, but this time it was different, and evidently she was getting more and more concerned about her health. But since it was around 3 a.m. in the morning, she didn't want to wake anybody up or frighten anyone concerning her anxious feelings. So she got in her car, drove nearly 30 minutes to this hospital, only to check in and then to check out. Not long after she made it here on that drive, her heart quit beating. Her life on this earth ended. Sadly, I preached her funeral 10 days ago. And I tell you, um, uh, you know, it, it, there was two things God put on my heart, and maybe you write this down right at that time that he wanted to speak to my heart, and I feel like he wanted to speak to others through, through her life. Um, live ready and, and live right, okay? Because you don't ever know. Um, you, it, it just is the truth. You never know when the, um, the, the, the hearse is coming to get you. And I want you to hear this. Praise God, I didn't know this much. She knew Jesus Christ as her personal Savior and Lord. So we're not grieving for her. She was, I want you to hear this because you need to write this down. Believers have anxiety too. It is time for the church to quit treating people like they have three eyes when they battle anxiety, when anxiety is human. I wholeheartedly believe that, that, that my dear friend would want you to hear this. You should never take your anxiety lightly, especially when it becomes strong and, and dominant. And it, because, listen, it can not only steal your joy, but it can steal your life. Now, many of you know that in 2020, during the pandemic, that, that mental health awareness just, just was shooting through the roof, and, and anxiety was getting greater and greater and greater. And I think all of us felt that in some form or fashion, regardless of what degrees. And, and yet, maybe you don't know this. You can write this down. In 2020 alone, over $280 billion was spent for mental health. Just that year, $280 billion was spent. For, for mental health. You know, you know why? The only reason why more wasn't spent? Because people didn't have money to pay for it. They'd, they'd, more would have been spent, wouldn't it? Now, I'm not here to talk to you about all the struggles, but sometimes, in order for you to understand the necessity for a solution, you need to see clearly the problem. So I'm here today to talk with you about some God solutions. God's Word tells us plenty, not a little bit, but plenty I mean, I could stay here as long as you got time. I could stay here morning, day, and night to talk with you about what the Bible says about fear, what it says about anxieties, what it says about worries. And so if God believed that that was something that is so um, prevalent in our lives and would be, then we need to make sure we sh shed some light on it through God's Word. I want to share with you today five things that you need to know. Not everything you need to know, but five things you need to know to overcome extreme anxiety. The first is this, and this levels the playing field. You need to understand that everyone struggles. You need to understand that everyone struggles. You are not alone. You are not alone. And I want, I want you to hear this. You do not outgrow them. New levels, new devils. In fact, the, the older we get, if we, can't work, if we don't have something to worry about, we'll find it. Won't we, mamas? Like my wife says, we can't all compartmentalize like you fellows. <laughs> and I mean, I'm serious. I've, I've asked God ever since, keep me. and Let me be a man, not a woman. But the truth is, listen, we, sometimes we, we think something's wrong with us when we battle anxiety. And, and we need to know that we're not alone. And that anxiety, not only does it affect everyone, but it easily can overwhelm anyone. Proverbs 12, 25 says anxiety in a person's heart weighs it down, but a good word makes it glad. So what I'm going to be breathing into you is a good word mixed with 
in the midst of your anxiety. I, I've never known anybody who ever, in 30 years of ministry, I've never heard anybody say to me, you know, I've, that, that was sober-minded, okay? I've never had an anxious moment. I try not to even ask that because I don't want nobody to be forced to lie. But I've also never heard anybody say this. Well, you know, Pastor, I had about 55 anxious moments this week, and I just want to give a praise report for all 55 of those. I enjoyed them, made my breakfast and prayer that much better. It does increase your prayer life, by the way. Wouldn't you agree? But, but I'm saying nobody enjoys anxiety. But Jesus, he says this. In John 16, he says, in this world, you're going to have tribulation and distress. In this world, you're going to have trials, sorrows. You know what comes from those trials and sorrows and those feelings of, out of, of feeling like you, you couldn't control your world or a piece of your heart just got ripped out is, is that, that anxiety is associated with those things. It's very normal for that to happen. Now, it's important that you remember that on that John 16, 33, even though we didn't put it up on the screen, Jesus, yeah, he says, hey, in this world, you're going to have trials and sorrows. But he said, take heart because I've overcome the world. And that in me, you can have peace. You can look through Scripture, Genesis to Revelation. You could read every self-help book out there, every blog out there, listen to every sermon preached. And at the end of the day, no sermon and no book itself alone can give you what only Christ alone can, which is peace. We will always have anxieties in this world. But I do got some good news for you. When, listen, as a believer in Jesus Christ, the moment you breathe your, your last breath in this imperfect world you will breathe your first breath of forever in God's perfect world. It won't always be this way. In the meantime, he gives you his word. He gives you his Holy Spirit to help you in the struggle. He gives you his people. So you need to know this, that stress is normal. So whenever you go to, to, to think about talking to someone about something, you need to understand that everyone has a struggle, even if their struggle is not your struggle. Listen, we all struggle in this life. Don't ever think that you're the only one. That's what Satan loves to convince you of, by the way. In fact, can I say something to you? Because I'm a preacher's son, so I can, I, can, I can get away with this. Your anxiety is doubly worse if you grew up in the average church. Okay? Your, your anxiety is double as worse. You know how I know that? Because sometimes we were, we were taught to zip it, lock it, and put it in the pocket. And I'm like, listen... How in the world I'm supposed to zip it, lock it, put it in my pocket, mama, when it's pouring all out both my pockets? Coming in the front, coming out the back. I had to quit wearing, wearing jeans with pockets. I'm like, man, you know, I tried to duct tape every anxiety I had, and then they just keep booming on out here. Y'all keep seeing them. You know, I want y'all to remember the preacher's perfect. He don't never have an anxious moment. Listen, I, I deal with... I'm not the most anxious I've ever been in my life, but I deal with just as many, if not more, anxieties than I've ever dealt with in my life. And I bet you, you have a similar story. Listen, don't ever think that you're the only one uh, and that, that by you sharing something, that that, that means that, that you're not strong enough. Well, count me, I'm not strong enough. I, I'm not strong enough. Um, and, and you're the only one that's not calmed enough in this life. You are not alone in the battle. And oftentimes we're afraid to share our anxieties with other people because the devil makes us think that we're the only ones struggling. And he loves to put people. I want somebody to hear this. He loves to put people on an island. Because when you're on an island, you got greater odds of going under. You show me a person who's going through hell and yet on their own little island with no one else in their corner and not being at the right places with the right people, and I will show you someone that eventually will not be strong enough and something bad's going to happen. I know. I've done many of them. In fact, I, I did a whole lot of funerals um, during COVID, and none of them, except for maybe one or so, was related to COVID. Again, anxiety. I dealt with several suicide funerals. Okay, listen, you reach a point without Jesus, if, if you don't have the hope of Jesus, there's nothing else to hope. And, and you need to understand it's not abnormal. We all need Jesus in order to maintain peace. In fact, at this church, in case you're visiting for the first time, we are, we are here and we're nothing but a bunch of real people with real problems who happen to know a real Jesus. That's it. But secondly, to overcome extreme anxiety, you need to know that confession is healing. Confession's healing. What I love about getting to share messages like this one is um, 
it, it's, it's, it's just not something I, I, I mean, most of the time when I'm preaching something to you, it ain't something I just got from, from, from somebody. And you probably say, well, I'm, I'm glad to hear you didn't borrow some of them bad notes from somebody else. But, but I, I mean it when I say this, that the, the greatest things with power are the things that you actually practice, okay? I don't, I don't, um, I don't preach sermons that I don't try to put into practice, okay? I also don't try to bring um, um, clarity on something that I don't have clarity about. But this right here, I have a lot of experience with. Not only with myself, but countless other people. In fact, I learn from people all the time that I deal with. It helps me. Ministry actually helps you. So you're like, okay, well, there's another thing I don't want to do. Or here's something I do want to do. Or here's, here's a different way to go about this. Listen, sometimes, I want you to write this down. Sometimes the most courageous step is to simply acknowledge your anxiety. Sometimes the most courageous step is to simply acknowledge your anxiety. It doesn't mean that you're weaker than others, but it may mean that in this season you're struggling more than others. Let me tell you from personal experience, confession is healing. When I spent that four years or so of my life, majority of the time, always at home, other, uh, Sundays were the only time, were the only time that I, that I left the house except to go to a doctor's appointment. Day in and day out, I was drowning in a pool of discouragement. I was, I was, I was clinging to hope and yet wasn't seeing hope. And I, I, I was just sitting there, God, how, how can I get? And eventually, my anxiety wore me out. And so I did just what I would recommend to somebody else if it's necessary for them. I went to a counselor at least 30 times, seeking to just, and, and how many of you know, sometimes counseling is not about hearing some magic answer or getting some magic pill. It's about getting things off your chest. And see, when, you, when you're a pastor, sometimes the, 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 the perception can be the same way it is for the church member who's been around the church for a long time. You think, well, I should have graduated past anxiety. Okay? Like I said, unfortunately, I'm, I, I'm thrilled if you're in 12th grade, but I'm in kindergarten. I'm still having to play. With, 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 with the same drums and, and say, God, help me. Be, here's the things you need to be honest with. Write this down. You need to be honest with yourself, with your God, and with others. You need to be honest in, in this order. Be honest with yourself because, see, if you're in denial, you won't, you won't acknowledge anything. Be, be honest with yourself, be honest with your God, and be honest with others. James 5.16 says, confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Let me make this very clear. Being anxious is not a sin, but it's also not the will of God for you. That makes sense. It is not a sin because it's human. If it's a sin, my Lord, Craig's be sinning all the time. Man, I mean, y'all just need to tell people every minute that preacher's sinning about something. Because there's stuff to worry about all the time. But I, but I had to learn anxiety is a real um, common thing, and it's going to be a normal thing this side of heaven. And so since I know that the struggle is going to be real, I got to learn how to deal with the struggle. And I got to know, it's not God's will for me to live anxiety. It's God's will for me to deal with, with his help, anxiety. Somehow we're, we're able to share our struggles with one another, and it's very healing. In fact, it gives us these opportunities. Uh, it gives other people the opportunity to identify with us and us with them. I, I don't like to see anybody in pain. But can I tell you that ever since that I've literally had a constant pain in the back and in my lower body all the time, that, that it doesn't matter where I'm at. I could be at, at, at Frankie's Fun Park, um, the zoo, and, and uh, Disneyland, McDonald's, where it's really hard to find Jesus. It doesn't matter, okay? Anywhere outside the church, and I'm always looking for someone who I can res my pain can resonate with their pain because I have not forgotten the tribe that I've come from and I have not forgotten the struggle that I've dealt with. And I want other people to understand hey, God can help you. You're never hopeless. You're never helpless. It, listen, it gives people opportunity to love on you. It gives people the opportunity to love on you. It gives people the opportunity to encourage you and then to pray for you. Did you know no one can pray for you about something that they do not even know exists? Extreme anxiety cannot be kept to yourself. Otherwise, it will grow like a cancer. And just so you don't take lightly, 
your small anxiety, just like cancer, there's a stage one and there's a stage five. Anxiety starts somewhere with everything. And, and, and listen, Satan will be perfectly fine with continuing to grow your anxiety as he gets you to keep the mask on. Look at this with me about how Jesus, did, did you know Jesus, not only did he have anxiety, he admitted his anxiety to his closest disciples. Matthew 26, 36 through 38. It says, then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Again, that showed his humanity. He was sorrowful. He was troubled. Then Jesus said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. By the way, he needed some Jesus with skin. He's like, listen, stay here. Stay here with me. I don't want to be alone right now. Listen, Jesus knew that he had to be honest with those closest to him and with the God, his Father. But thirdly, to overcome extreme anxiety, you need to know that prayer is essential. Prayer is essential. Jesus taught us, and he demonstrated that it doesn't matter what we are going through, prayer always needs to be in the mix. In fact, I mean, he's pretty clear that it needs to be our first response, not our last resort. Jesus showed us that when we can't do anything else, prayer can change things. Did you know prayer can go places you can't? Prayer can do things you can't. Prayer can do things that are against the natural because prayer is all about tuning in to the supernatural. Do you know that the scripture and Jesus himself, I didn't know this, a man taught me this one time and I didn't even know he was teaching this to me and that is um, had a gentleman that was a, a pastor um, for many, many years and he was in his mid-90s and, and um, I used to visit him and, and, another, and his brother who were both hospice patients at the same time. Both were in ministry. Both were, had been pastors. Early on in my, in my ministry, I was getting to see these guys and, and, and I just remember I was doing a message on stress and I asked this one particular guy who was just full of such wisdom. I said, sir, you mind asking me, answering a question I have? I said, in your most stressful moments ever that you can ever think of to date, what would you do differently if you had to do those things over again? And all he said was, hey, I would pray, I would pray, and I would pray. He said, because in most of the situations that you're talking about and the magnitude that you're talking about with this extreme anxiety, if I could have fixed it, I would have. If I could have changed it, I would have changed it. But all I could do was pray, but I could pray. And I knew that God could change the situation. Look at what Jesus did. Matthew 26, 38 through 44. It says, then Jesus said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed. That's his first time. He, he says, my father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Verse 40, then he returned to his disciples, and he found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Here's the part we all can identify with. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen? He went a second time and prayed. Why couldn't he get it out the first time, okay? Why has he got to go pray again? Because sometimes all you can do is pray. So he prays a second time, My Father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back again, he found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more. This is the third time saying the same thing. Sometimes you say, well, man, God's got to be tired of hearing me saying the same, same prayer. Listen, if, it's, if God cares about it, you should still be praying about it. If God can do something about it, you should still be praying for God to do something about it. And I do want to notice something in this. Jesus knew what God's will was. He knew it was God's will for him to go to the cross, yet he still didn't want to take up that cross. All right? Even Jesus, because of his humanity, he wanted to be like, God, are you sure this is what you want? I know it's what you said you want, but are you sure this is what you want? Because I'm not feeling this. And again, how many of you know it's easier to pray something for someone else going through a tough situation, but it's different when you're in it? It's different when it's your cross? And I want you to understand prayer is not about you 
telling God your will, but it is aligning yourself with his will. God's word tells us that, that, that the key to peace is constantly praying about everything and thanking God for everything. It's just a constant thing of going, hey, God, here's my prayer request. Here's my prayer list. Here's all the things I can't control list. But God, also, I see what you've been doing. I remember what you did, and I trust you for what you're going to do. Listen, we have to pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances. And then this is what Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says. Then you will have God's peace. I want you to understand you cannot have peace when you don't have prayer. Not if you're going through deep stuff. Listen, how does prayer help our anxiety? I want you to hear this. Prayer helps us this way. It takes things off our shoulders. It takes things off our shoulders and puts them on God's shoulders. I'm so grateful that even though I've taken back the prayer request many a time from God, that he lets me put it back on his shoulders once I've had enough. Prayer also, listen to this, it invites God in to the otherwise unbearable. It invites God in. It's like, God, I need you right now. I need you to take over. God, I I don't want to be in your way anymore. I want you to have your way And God, I want to know that you're in the midst of this battle. I don't want to be in. Listen, there's no worse pain than pain where you don't feel like God's anywhere around. And then thirdly, prayer calls down angels from above to fight for you. Prayer calls down angels from above to fight for you. 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Don't let anybody tell you that your request is too small or too big because we got a great big God who has enough love to share with everybody. Psalm 55, 22 says, Cast your burden on the Lord. I like this part. It says in the Amplified Bible, it says, Release it. Cast your burden on the Lord. Release it. Listen, you can pray it or you can release it, but you can't really have prayer if you didn't release it. Listen, that wasn't a prayer. That was a poem. Okay? I've had poems before. I make good ones. How about you? I can make it sound eloquent. It's not about eloquent words, by the way. He says, cast your burden on the Lord, release it, and he will sustain and uphold you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken, slip, fall, or fail. I, I, I never cease to forget what it felt like me, for me the first time this happened, because this happened a couple other times, but the first time that I was ever home on a Sunday, battling with my jot junk, and, and um. I, uh, I, here you were at church, I'm at home just hoping to get up and somehow put a smile on my face, and I called my dad up, and I said, Dad, I said, I need you to pray with me, because I can't pray for myself. I said, I need you to pray for me, because my prayers are but whispers. And anybody who knows what I'm talking about, you know what I mean when you have run clean out of yourself. You can't feel yourself. You can't, you can't get yourself just over this or that. And you, you wonder even, can you pray anymore? In fact, you feel like you're, at that given time, because you feel so weak, your prayers feel powerless. I want you to understand that, that your prayers don't have power because of your perfection, but because of the connection through Jesus Christ. It's about surrender to God and connection with God. And guess what the Bible says? When you don't even know what to pray, you can hook your heart up to God's heart, and he, through the Spirit, can pray for you. Romans 8, 26 says the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. I can't tell you how many times I've been outmatched, and I've been with somebody with horrific stuff, okay? Horrific stuff where there's no way for me to look the other person in the eyes and just say, hey, this is going to be easy, or how we deal with this, or how we deal with that. And I don't worry about getting it all right and dotting every I and crossing every T. We just go to praying. We just go to praying, and we're like, God, at the end of this, please let it end up where you want it to end up. All we know is we need you to take over, because all we are is bent over. But fourthly, to overcome extreme anxiety, you need to know faith gives you wings. Faith gives you wings. Now, I know good and well, because my, 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 my son always says, don't you, Asher? 
You're like, okay, Dad, if you want to keep me awake, you got to have a joke. I wish, like I said, I wish these things were playing. They just come to me. You're like, we can tell. <laughs> okay? You can tell when it's somebody's gut, not their God. But I came up with something. I want to mark it. I need somebody to write down the idea. Write it down, okay? You've heard of Red Bull. What about Faith Bull? You've heard about Red Bull. It, gives, it says it gives you wings. It does for a couple hours. Then you fall back down. And you can't flap no more. Faith Bull. Sponsored by Pitbull and the pastor. <laughs> this, 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 this faith bull has been prayed over in 32 different countries. And for 1995, you can have this. <laughs> now, hey, listen, I, I, I say that. You know, a lot of people, I don't mean any harm by it, but a lot of people have sold a whole lot of things under the, under the um, category of faith that didn't give you no wings. They just wanted your money. Okay. There are many things in life, I want you to hear this, that you can't get over, but faith can take you through it. Faith can give you wings. Listen, you could find yourself in the middle of a Grand Canyon where you're like, listen, this is nothing but a bottomless pit, and yet he can help you soar through and over whatever it is. What might have worked for a little anxiety, I want you to hear this, what might have worked for you with a little bit of anxiety will not work for you with extreme anxiety. If it's not faith driven, it will not. In fact, I, I, I hate it that, that many people are in for a rude awakening because many people just don't think they need faith. And I'm going, okay, if you live to tell about it, come back to me when life and your flesh have introduced you to yourself. Extreme anxiety, it can deflate you, it will depress you, and if you let it keep growing, it will destroy you. Faith can help you walk through the fire, get through the valley, and climb up the mountain. When otherwise, listen, you could flap and flap and flap, you could try and try and try, and you could hope and hope and hope, but some things only faith can get you through. Isaiah 40, 31 says, but those who trust in the Lord, that's faith, by the way, trust in the Lord. Trust in his plan, trust in his will, trust in his guidance. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar on high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. It didn't say, by the way, that you won't have times where you're like, listen, I know you just said that we will not faint, but I feel like I'm about to pass out, preacher. I, no, nowhere does it say you won't feel certain things. But it says we walk, we live by faith, not by sight. You may feel like everything is falling apart in your life. You may feel like you're dying on the inside and that all things are hopeless, but faith can give you wings. Faith can help you soar when otherwise you surely would fall apart, you would crash, you would be exposed. Listen, when you know God is with you, when you know God is for you, you can have faith that God is greater than the storm upon you. Isaiah 41.10 says, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. You know what jumps out to me? Is he isn't saying you, he's saying I. I'm going to make you strong enough. I'm going to lift your spirits. I'm going to help you through this. I'm going to make a way where there seemed to be no way. Even when your anxieties have multiplied. Psalm 94, 19 says, When my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your comfort delights me. Your comfort delights me. Listen, when you know that you put everything in God's hands, and again, only you can know that, by the way. I, nobody can know that except for you because that's a hard decision. But when you know that you put everything in God's hands and that you're not seeking to be dependent upon your situation, but you're seeking to be dependent and focused on your Savior, you can be sure that God has your back and he has the situation because you put it in his hand. Isaiah 35, 4 says, Say to those with an anxious and panic-stricken heart, Be strong, fear not. As they say, there's at least 365 fear nots in Scripture. Indeed, your God will come with vengeance for the ungodly. The retribution of God will come, but he will save you. I don't know how God's going to work it out. You don't know how God's going to work it out. What we have um, uh, total confidence in and assurance of from God is blessed assurance Jesus is mine. 
That even when I don't understand, he's got a plan. That even when I can't walk another step, he's got my hand. Psalm 34, 4, I love this scripture. I'm reading this out of Amplified Bible. You may want to um, put an asterisk beside this and remember this. It says, I sought the Lord on the authority of his word, and he answered me, and he delivered me from all my fears. You know why the word of God is the best work of God? Because that word can come in and bring you truth when you were falling for a lie. That word can come in and bring you hope and comfort when you had no other comfort or hope to be found by what you see or feel or touch. But last but not least, to overcome extreme anxiety, you need to understand that the next right step matters most. But I had to put this, I changed this out a couple of different times. I had some fancy stuff that be in there, and he's like, listen, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The next right step matters. Listen, anytime you are suffocating in in extreme anxiety where you have to calculate every step because every step feels like you are carrying 3,500 other backpacks that don't belong to you, in those times, the next decision really matters because you get winded and you barely got much to give and get up to go with to begin with. And so therefore, today's decisions, the next right decision is the most important decision. Because if you're not careful, listen, when you're in extreme anxiety, if you're not careful, you'll be worrying about all the things you shouldn't be worrying about instead of taking care of the thing you should be worried about. And Jesus taught us to make the most of each day because the, each day has enough trouble. Matthew 6, 34, Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of his own. Listen, you don't need to run from God. You need to run to God. You don't need to keep trying to direct your own steps. You need to seek God wholeheartedly. Lay your face down before him. Listen, when you feel helpless and you already know you can't fix the situation, why would you keep trying to? When you are sinking by the second. Psalm 139, 23 through 24 says, Search me, O God, know my heart, and test me, and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you, and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Listen, you can want God's blessing, but not be willing to humble yourself before God. Everybody like, oh yeah, Pastor, I want the Lord's blessing. And I'm like, if you would only choose to quit living willfully in sin and doing what you want, when you want, how you want, you might, you just might experience the peace of God. Listen, all of us have been there before. Listen, some of the times when I'm trying my hardest was the time I'm most out of line. If you know what I'm saying. I've had that happen so many times. Thank God for a wife that helps me um, find my way. She's like, listen, you got to do something with yourself, boy. I want you to hear the scripture, Psalm 143, 10 through 12. It says, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Think about what that just said right there. Why are you going to God? Because he's God. Why would you, why would you talk and, and consult those who only see at the floor seat like you and me versus saying, hey, I'm going straight to the one who knows all, sees all, sees what I have been through, sees what I'm going through, as well as sees how the story needs to go as it continues. Teach me to do your will for you're my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on a firm footing. It, listen, we don't get what our sins deserve when we turn things over to Christ. We get forgiven by grace. We become new creations, and we now have a new heart hope regardless of how much we feel like we screwed up in the past. He says, may your gracious spirit lead me forward on a firm footing for the glory of your name, O Lord, preserve my life because of your faithfulness. Bring me out of this distress in your unfailing love. Silence all my enemies, destroy all my foes for I am your servant. Now, something some of you have heard before me say, but it's important whenever I, because of where I got this particular line. My brother used to attend a very, very large church in Florida. And his pastor, who was a very charming guy, wonderful young family, vibrant family, seemed like he had everything together. He ended every service. He ended every service saying, hey, now listen, folks, don't worry about all the other steps. You just need to take the next step right step. Well, I wish on one day he had taken his own advice instead of being a pastor of thousands, climbing up on top of his own house and taking his own life. 
the very person who was saying, hey, Keep taking the next right step. And you know what it shows me and reminds me? Because you don't understand like I do. See, as a pastor, you, I just say it the nicest way I can. You have no clue. You have no clue what it's like to pastor a church. Outside of the presidency and the college football, I don't want to be a no, no pastor. But you know what? I do want to be in God's will, and so that's why I'm looking at you. How you doing today? There's things you're doing you don't want to do. It's too much for you. It's too big for you. But you want to take the next right step. I want you to understand today, you are not alone in your battle. You are not the only person that struggles with anxiety. Your anxieties matter to God, and therefore they matter to us. By the way, if you love love God, you have to love people. You should love people. It shouldn't even be a chore. You should want to love people. You don't got to like somebody to love them. You need to understand, listen, that, that the only conditioning you need, first and foremost, you need prayer conditioning to get through what you're going through. You need to phone a friend, call a friend, grab a friend today, and have somebody that you can truly take the mask off and can pray with you and can love on you and can encourage you. I've always, throughout my ministry, my wife will tell you, I'm very quick to call people who I know I can trust and say, listen, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself, but this thing's starting to concern me. I'm not sure if I can handle this any longer. I I don't feel like I got all my stuff together. And and man, this anxiety is eating a hole in me, and I'm getting a little concerned, and I'm getting so anxious, that's why I called you. I love it when the person on the other side of the phone or the person that I'm meeting with does not judge me for what I'm doing or what I've not done, but they're just saying, hey, let me hold your hand and pray with you. That's real friends, by the way. Some of you, you got to choose today that you're going to no longer walk in the flesh, but you're going to choose to walk by faith. I can't do that for you, by the way. But I can promise you this. If you put your little hand back in his big hand, God will take you through. It's not he might. It's not he could. He will take you through and to whatever he has for you. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Heavenly Father, God, You told us, Lord, in your word, come to you, all of us who are weary and heavy burdened, Lord, and that you would give us rest to cast all of our cares upon you because, Lord, you care about us. Lord, you tell us if we humble ourselves before you, if we surrender ourselves to to you, God, you will lift us up, God, and you will be lifted up in and through our lives. God, we thank you for all that you have helped us endure up to this point. And Lord, we invite you into our situations, our anxieties, our concerns, our worries, our fears. We invite you into those situations right now, God. Jesus, take the wheel of our lives. God, I pray that each person listening to my my voice even right now, they would choose to allow you to take the wheel of their life in all aspects, God physically, emotionally, mentally, relationally, spiritually. God, that we would re-surrender, Lord. Lord, you tell us if we'll, if your people will humble our, our, themselves, God, and turn from their wicked ways and seek your face, Lord, wholeheartedly. Lord, then you will heal our land, Lord. And the first thing that you, Lord, promised to heal is us. God, breathe healing into this room, God, as I've been praying and praying and praying, God, that you would just fill this place with the aroma of your love, God, and with the moving of your spirit in such a way that each person knows, Lord, it's not the pastor calling them, it's not the church calling them, it is you, God, reaching into their crisis, trying to get them to the cross. God, I give you every anxiety that is attacking every individual right now and I pray in the name of Jesus that they would be set free from this bondage I pray in the name of Jesus Lord that they would not try to run from you Lord but they would choose to run to you and they would know Lord greater are you that is in them than anything Lord that will ever come upon them we give all things to you right now have your way in this place God we give you every line of our hearts and lives past present and future in Jesus name amen Would you stand with us? This altar is open. Would you stand with us? And I want to remind you, this altar is not a place of disgrace. This place, this is an altar of grace. You're not the only one. I would love to pray with you here, or you can come down here.
How could I stand this storm alone? Me without you, out here on my own. Who would I have to hold me? Who else can make these mountains move? Where would I be? Where would I be without you? I close my eyes, cause fate to see for me. I'm out of breath, but you are breathing for me. I lift my hands to Jesus be the glory. To Jesus be the glory. be without you facing this fight I'd never choose where would I be without you nothing else to lose who could I have to hold me who else can make these mountains move where would I be where would I be without you where would I be where would I be
lift my hands to Jesus be the glory to Jesus be the glory all glory to you God forever glory to you you deserve all our praise for all the things you've done in our lives glory be to you glory be to you all the glory